Thank you everyone for joining in on time. We will start with the live session in less than a minute. Hello and welcome back to another session of the Let's Get Technical series brought to you by EXP Invest. I am Kavita Agrawal and in today's session we are talking about candlesticks. Now I see a lot of people memorizing a lot of stuff about candlesticks and applying them in different ways. But based on my past 10 years of experience I have learned that candlesticks do not have to be so intense theoretically. So today I'll discuss with you starting from the definition of candlesticks for our more fresh audience or rather more starter or beginner audience and we will move towards the more practical application and I will show you in the process how I prefer to use candlesticks for making buying and selling decisions when it comes to swing trading in the stock market. So in the world of financial markets, understanding market trends and making informed trading decisions is obviously important. So how does candlestick chart reading, a powerful tool, provide us with valuable insights in understanding these market dynamics and help us navigate the complexities of trading? Trading, the whole world of trading becomes a lot simpler when you realize that trading is nothing but the power dynamics happening between buyers and sellers that is what determines the price movements and it is this price movement that we are trying to capitalize on and make profits out of so all of this sounds very high hi-fi might sound very complex but honestly this is what it breaks down to how do you determine where the power dynamics is tilting whether in the favor of the buyers and or in the favor of the sellers and staying on the winning side. The winning is the profit. By comprehending the language of the candlesticks, we can decipher market sentiments, identifying potential reversals and continuations and time our entries and exits more, more effectively. Now, notice how this says more effectively and not with utmost guarantee. Why? Because just knowing about candlesticks is not going to guarantee profits or success for you in the stock market. There are many tools out there which can be applied and candlesticks happen to be just one of the tools which are actually very effective but cannot be used independently. So let's talk about some definition first. Candlesticks are nothing but graphical representations of price movements within a given period of time. So when it is green, it means that the price is advanced forward. When it is red, it means that they advanced backwards. Sometimes analysts may use different colors also to identify up days and down days. <coughs> Excuse me. A candlestick consists of a body and wick. It might also be called a shadow. As you can see, there is a thick part of the candlestick and a narrow part of the candlestick. So the thick part is the body and the narrow part is the wick. Now the body represents the price range between opening and closing prices, right? So basically depending on the color, so if it is a green candlestick, you know that the price closed higher than the open, right? As I have marked. And if it is a red candlestick, that simply means that the price closed lower than the open right and then the upper wick the extreme length of the upper wick identifies the highest price and the lower end identifies the lower price some people tend to ignore the wicks of the candlesticks and depend more on the body some people take wicks the shadows very seriously some people have different strategy when it comes to using other drawing tools along with this so if you're aware of Fibonacci ratios or trend lines, I'm sure you are. So in trend lines, some people prefer to ignore wicks. Some people prefer to take wicks into consideration when they are drawing their trend lines. Same goes for Fibonacci levels. So what should actually be done? I believe that 
when it comes to using different tools on different stocks a stock's behavior needs to be taken into consideration there are some stocks in which wix can easily be involved uh, can easily be ignored these are especially stocks which have a tendency of giving vol volatile movements the problem with ignoring wix is that uh, sometimes a stock may give a strong a big spike and as a result of that some fake stop losses may get triggered for people who have low risk appetite i would suggest that avoid stocks where you see a lot of long shadows or long wicks because those are the stocks that are actually quite volatile during the day now when drawing trend lines it's always best to use the cloning trend line technique now cloning trend line is a topic that i have discussed multiple times on these sessions if you are interested in knowing what they are just pick up any of the let's get technical series sessions and you will be able to uh, get some videos some material on that i also did a dedicated session so you'll get and get that in the archives as well um so that is the thing now we will take a look at the application of wix uh, and the usage of wix in a short while but for now let's move on so why do candlesticks form or how do candlesticks form now candlesticks form due to the continuous buying and selling activity in the market when there is no trading activity there is no candlestick for example when a stock is being illiquid when a stock is standing at a upper circuit or a lower circuit so here this snippet that you can see is from the chart of alok industries there was a point of time when this stock made continuous upper circuits so there was no candle formation because every single day the stock was opening and closing at the highest price beyond which it could not go if you are not aware of the concept of circuit to do a quick google search nothing uh, very exciting usually on the intraday time frame of certain stocks which have uh, which do not have enough liquidity you might also see such flat candles or rather these flat lines which indicate the absence of a candle uh, which basically means no price trading activity now the interplay between buyers and sellers creates price movements which are reflected in candlestick patterns and there are hundreds of the, such patterns but the theoretical part of such candles is not important like i said on the days when the buyers are more in power we will have a green candle on the day when sellers or uh, manage to overpower the market we will have a red candle on days when there is a lot of fight between the traders uh, the buyers and the sellers we will get a doji right and uh, there are more there are nearly hundreds of patterns like harami engulfing piercing three white crows three black soldiers i don't know there are like so many that even i cannot keep track of all of those patterns and trading them is out of question so how do you use it let's go there but first candlestick patterns provide insights into the sentiments behavior of the markets now this is the most important thing that you need to know when you're looking at the candlestick don't focus on the kind of pattern that it might be because honestly even good technical analysts sometimes get confused between whether a hammer happens at the bottom or is it a shooting star because ultimately it's the exact same candlestick just differs in terms of whether it's at the bottom after a trend or before an uptrend so when you are looking at candlestick patterns don't worry about what the pattern is called worry more about what it tells you about the sentiment or behavior of the market participants so if it has a long lower wick it means that the buyers have the upper hand if it has a long upper wick it means that the sellers have the upper hand uh this is also the reason why support and resistance zones get formed basically usually the power dynamics in the stock market does not change very quickly it takes time there is a period of pushing and pulling in the market before which prices decide to reverse in the favor of the winning party and that is the reason why we see support resistance zones form and a lot of times it is also been seen that it is at the same level that this change of hands or reversal happens in the market now candlesticks let's talk about candlesticks across different time frame charts 
Now, one thing that I always advocate when it comes to using charts for trading is that don't keep switching the time frame of the chart. It's always better to have multiple windows showing multiple time frames. So I will explain what I mean with an example. So this is my trading screen. So, um, I'm sorry, this is my trading view uh, chart and uh, let me just clean it up. There you go. Here you can see that there are six time frames that I follow starting all the way from monthly time frame to make sure that I have a great view of the broad market movement down to the three minute time frame. Now how this helps me is it gives me a bird eye view to a very detailed view of what the price is doing and who's winning. And on the basis of this then I can determine whether or not a valid position or a valid trade setup is forming in the time frame which I am interested in trading. So for instance, I primarily trade the 75 minute time frame because I am a swing trader. Right. For someone who is a intraday trader would probably be trading a one minute time frame. However, even though I trade on the, you know, I do swing trading with a holding period of two weeks to it can go up to six months. I need to have visibility on where the broad trend is going and at what point does the trend that I am participating in beginning to change. So I prefer so uh, the 15 minute and the three minute chart come in more handy when I'm in the monitoring stage of my trade. Whereas the daily, the 75 minute and the 15 minute as well help me more in determining when to exactly enter the trade. The weekly and the monthly charts help me identify whether or not the primary trend of the stocks that I am following is in my favor or not. In fact, following the weekly and the monthly time frame also help me sometimes capture very good turnaround stories where I can hold the stock for more than 40, 50, 60% gains in just a matter of weeks. So let's get back. So this is what I mean that you need to look at candlesticks across different time frames. Time frames in chart analysis offer varying level of detail and perspective. So this varying level of detail and perspective is what I just explained. Now on this chart, you can see that I have attached VBL's one month chart, which uh, from starting from uh, March and this covers barely four candles. The same amount of period has been covered on the 15 minute time frame and you can see a clear uptrend forming with peaks and bottoms and a very tradable trend. Now, if the same thing you look at on the three minute chart, naturally it is showing more candles, uh, more uh, movement. Now, why do we want to keep an eye on different time frames? Why, why am I suggesting that use different windows and don't keep switching the same window because of this? So you see different candlestick patterns may em emerge on various time frame charts now this on this vbl chart on the daily time frame a doji pattern had appeared here which along with the previous candles long upper wick gave a early indication that the buyers might be losing the upper hand now if you look at the 15 minute chart you can see that it started off with a very strong uptrend continued up but then here it gave a strong downtrend with a slightly long upper a wick went back up retested the level and came back down now on this chart if i had seen this doji formation after this long wick followed following a uptrend i would have taken my position out right here on the 15 minute chart however my stop loss would have been at the bottom of this chart now there are multiple reasons because of that so when we use the time frames when we use different charts for different time frames it gives us the advantage of being able to look at things side by side long term time frames that is daily weekly offer a broader view of the market trend shorter time frames provide a more granular granular insight into the price movement so what is the role of wicks in candlestick interpretation 
Long upper and lower wicks indicate significant price rejection or price reversal. So, in order to take a better look at this, let me show you the monthly chart of Nifty. Now, on this monthly chart of Nifty, if you notice where there have been big wicks, um, okay. I guess uh, if I use drawings, all of that is going to come back. So I'm just going to hide all of them again. All right. So as you can see, wherever there were long lower wicks. So for instance, this whole section, the wicks after this long candle, long red candle started to become very long. Again, here also when the market gave a short term correction, like a month long correction after strong uptrend, the indication that this uptrend was this downtrend was not going to last too long came with this candle here which which is actually called a hammer pattern but if you think about it the fact that the price went all the way down and then was recovered and uh, closed high up is testimony to the fact that buyers had come back in power despite of the fight which sellers were putting in um, again here also we can see that there is a long wick but the very next candle there is also an upper wick so here we can see there is a clear indecision in the market which is then followed by a trend reversal so here we saw a strong uptrend we saw a big red candle an indecisive candle or a doji candle as it is called and then downtrend so what I'm trying to say is that if you're paying some good attention to how long the wicks are, how the body is versus the wicks, where the opening and closing are, just think about the candlestick from the perspective of what buyers and sellers are doing, who's winning and who's losing. You will no longer need to memorize any more candlestick patterns because this is ultimately what candlesticks are showing us. And when we start focusing on, on the right thing, we put ourselves in a position to make better decisions faster. You will not find yourself wasting your time opening that candlestick book again and lo looking up patterns. I mean, for beginners, of course, it is recommended to memorize the patterns. But once you go on a more advanced level in the market and start looking at things from a more practical perspective, then it's okay to let go of, you know, those um, small memory bits. All right. So, like I said, the uh, size of the wick and the direction of these wicks or shadows, they suggest strong buying or selling pressure in the market. And as a result, they can also suggest early on potential reversals. Bigs can also highlight potential areas of support or resistance. Okay, so like I said, here this was a potential support zone. So you can see multiple wicks got formed here. Here this was a potential resistance zone. So we can see that the price went into consolidation um, despite of the fact that the price was in strong uptrend we could see some slowdown happening here and well this is not so much about the wicks except for in this candle where we can see that after another strong uptrend a doji candle with a strong upper shadow was formed here followed by another candle with a long upper shadow which was soon followed by a correction. So this was, this then becomes our resistance zone for the market. And here we can see that the market retested this resistance zone, went back down, gave some long, gave one candle on the monthly time frame with a long lower shadow indicating that the buyers are pushing. And then we see a strong green candle. So this is this. This is almost a Maribozo except it has tiny shadows but it's like a solid green candle and we can see that the market has broken up the price has broken above the resistance with a strong green candle and then it maintained itself. So this strong green candle what does it tell us it tells us that the buyers are absolutely in power all the way from the open all the way to the close during the entire month it stayed in power. Now, 
if the market was if today was 1st october 2013 that is the month when the scandal was formed after seeing the scandal on the daily time frame what i would do would be to go down on the daily time frame and the 75 minute time frame and see what was the movement within this chart so now let's move on to the more recent time frame so that we can actually do that so look at this red candle now this long strong red candle has occurred after a uptrend on nifty this was the 1st december 2022 candle and we can see after the formation of the strong red candle we can see the downtrend continued now notice this so here the buyers are trying to push but the sellers are pretty strong because they opened high almost near the high and closed more than half way below the body okay so don't think that just because there is a wick that means the buyers are in power no look at the position of the wick versus the rest of the body the rest of the body is a much bigger and stronger red candle which means that the sellers are in full force look at the next candle in the next candle a small wick has come which means when the price opened the buyers did try to push it might just have been this sentiment which was already witnessed in the previous candle that got carried forward but then soon the sellers came back pushed the prices down but before the closing uh you know the price uh, managed to move slightly up now when we move to the next candle what we see is there is almost no lower wick there is only upper wick okay but the next candle is a indecisive candle it is a doji candle and then we see a reversal so having studied this on the monthly time frame let's take a step back and go down to the daily time frame and see what the chart looks like on uh, the basis of uh, uh, since december 2022 so this is the this is the starting so on the daily time frame also we can see that after the strong uptrend there was this big red th th there was a red candle right at the top after the red candle we can see some a couple of candles where the buyers tried to exert their dominance again um it is after the occurrence of this candle where the open was equal to high that the downtrend actually began so until this point the buyers was still trying to make a comeback but after this a uh, red candle which is a strong red candle and has a uh, even though it has a lower wick the next 3 days were went up however it uh, however this small uh, candle here again shows that there was absolute indecision so even though the price managed to go above this high we can see that this indecision indicates that the trend or the strength of the buyers movement is not very strong and then what do we see next day the price has turned now there are lots of patterns which you know can be identified for instance you see this gap between the body of the candles here so this can be called as an island reversal this can be called as a bearish engulfing this is again a small island reverse reversal or a doji candle so you can have all of these names but memorizing these names and looking up what to expect can be very distracting because it takes away from what is actually happening in the market but when we are looking at just the candlestick formations objectively and trying to determine which direction the buyers and sellers uh, activity is going on we'll get much better insights let's look at the more recent activity from just and as you can notice i have cleared the chart of any um drawings or any indicators because we are purely and purely looking at candlesticks here so we can see here that a strong red can a green candle was formed recently the price gave a gap up came back down to test this and then continued up and usually this what what we are seeing here this is basically uh, a hammer pattern which occurs at the bottom of a trend here it is occurring not at the bottom of a trend but at the top of a trend so that can be confusing but if you think about the power dynamics then what this tells us 
is that the sellers try to come back into control but they lost that control the next day we saw a gap up the sellers try to push further the next day that is yesterday we saw doji formation and here there is actually a resistance around the level of 18650 which appeared to be holding pretty well until today when the stock market gave a fantastic breakout above this whole resistance zone and moved up and is continuing to go up as we see because nifty is now trading at 17000 sorry 18700 and higher right so this let's also go one step below so one step back and take a look at the 75 minute time frame so on the 75 minute time frame we can see that this strong green candle which was formed yesterday at uh, 215 basically the last candle of yesterday is when the buyers had already started to push for dominance and today morning this observation if anybody would have made uh, would have come to fruition because market opened with a gap up and went uh, and has uh, been continuing that trend higher and higher all right so let's talk about candlestick patterns and interpretation now i know i have told you that uh, candlestick patterns you don't need to memorize however there are these main candlestick patterns which you should remember first is doji it indicates market indecision or equilibrium so in doji typically the body is very small which means that the open and the close are almost at the same level maybe few points here and there the wicks or the shadows can be long or short irrespective of that it is the closeness of the open and the close price and the presence of a uh, of shadows is what identifies a doji now remember i showed you uh, those uh, horizontal or those dash kind of lines which indicate that there is no market there is no price activity so remember those do not identify as dojis for a doji it has to have a shadow and open and close prices which may be close to being the same now hammer hammer signals a bullish reversal now obviously if it's uh, if it's signaling a bullish reversal it uh, has to come at the end of a downtrend otherwise you know it wouldn't be a bullish reversal because only if the tre trend was bearish it can uh, become a bullish reversal otherwise it would be called a bullish continuation but here we are calling it a bullish reversal why now if you look at the body it's pretty uh, it's pretty obvious because the what this hammer candlestick signifies is that the price opened doesn't matter whether the price was higher open price was higher than the close or lower because the real body is very small so the color of the hammer does not matter whether it is red or green what matters is that the wick should be at least 3x bigger than the uh body of the candle 3x is a rule of thumb 2.5x also does not really make a lot of difference and it's not like anybody is going to be measuring the price but just you know you can eyeball that shooting star is the hammer inverted but upside down and it is a potential bearish reversal it occurs after an uptrend so basically if a up trend has been going up strongly but then the price uh Uh, but the candlestick forms a long upper shadow then that can be the uh, example of a shooting star so i have pulled out the chart of nelco for you because nelco yesterday gave a fantastic bull trend and not to boost but nelco was one of the stocks where my members of exp invest had positions because i had recommended the stock to them at a much lower level so anyways after 30 days we were able to book around 15% profits it was wonderful um now as you can see that the stock went bonkers and it rallied 16% and when it was done rallying it gave the shooting star pattern and has not really fallen down but has definitely stopped going up so this is the reason why you should not make your short position solely on the basis of these candlestick patterns because these candlestick patterns by themselves are not do not show you the complete picture so this did uh 
signal a shift in the power dynamics but not necessarily a downtrend and then the engulfing pattern now the engulfing pattern is basically that the market goes into some sort of indecision basically a small candlestick forms and then a strong candlestick dominates the market so if the strong candlestick is uh, a red candle then it's a bearish engulfing if it's a green candle it's a bullish engulfing also uh, where this pattern occurs whether at the end of a bull trend or a bear trend also determines its significance now along with candlesticks it's also important to study the volume on candlesticks because volume tells us a lot about what is happening in the market and where the weight is going to tilt towards so here again i have emphasized that candlestick pattern should not be used in isolation it should be combined with other technical tools for confirmation now for instance if you are more comfortable with breath indicators then combine candlestick observations with breath indicator signals if you are more into momentum trading like me so i use moving averages and uh, relative strength index uh along with that i use tools like trend lines i use crossovers and moving averages i superimpose different relative strength index i also apply smoothing on the relative strength index to you know uh cancel out some noise and then i look at candlesticks i look at the volume profile on each so when you want to make a decision it should not be any one pattern or any one a uh, chart pattern or candlestick pattern or any one indicator or any rule of thumb what you need to go with is you need to collect evidences the more evidences you collect the better your trade setup is the higher the lower the risk that you are incurring and the higher the target the better your trade setup is so it's always uh, beneficial to understand that your capital is very valuable and if you're going to invest in any trade idea you have to make sure that that setup deserves your capital so let the setup prove to you that it deserves the capital let it show you the reasons why you should give your capital to it and only then you should go ahead and make your position all right so 33 minutes and dot on time so that was all i had to say about candlesticks I will take a look at your comments now and if you have any questions I'm more than happy to help you out. Also remember that you can ask about stocks in this Q&A session and I will be happy to look take a look at the charts and tell you probable support levels, resistance levels or stop loss levels, target levels if you have position. I can also tell you whether you should go ahead and make a position or not. Through these sessions I have helped a lot of people not make the common mistake of entering a trade after the rally i always advocate for making positions before rallies begin and through the whole principle of technical analysis of course it is possible to identify early on this shift in power dynamics between buyers and sellers and join the winning side all right so as you post your uh, comments for me to look at one thing that i will do is in the comment section i will post the link i will share with you the link of my telegram channel so if you would like to connect with me and know more about the swing trading services that i do that i give um this link is where you can find all information this is the best forum to get in touch with me personally all right so mahesh ji welcome back happy to see you um let's take a look at the chart of dmart for mahesh ji now let me just cancel the things i did earlier okay there you go my drawings are back on chart and you can see my charts now all right so dmart hmm so dmart recently did a little bit pain for me in the sense that it gave a downside spike in yesterday's scare and it took some positions out however see i do believe that dmart has a very strong future and the reason for that is actually the 
weekly time frame so on the weekly time frame as you can see that the chart the prices have corrected all the way from 5826 and fallen nearly 43 percent to come back down to this absolutely lowest trend line all right and here it like on the weekly time frame you'll see there is there is a positive divergence on the weekly time frame on the daily time frame there is a positive divergence on the 75 minute time frame there was a positive divergence but we've already seen rally but with this positive after since this uh, positive divergence what we can see that here rsi breached the level of 30 while the price was near 3449 and when the price came back to a much lower level twice a low level lower than this we can see that the rsi has stayed above the level of 30. if you attended the last week session on rsi range shift you know what i'm going to say next that dmart has gone in the positive or the bullish range which means that i am expecting strong rally to come in the stock but who should make position and what should be your stop loss so as you can see the nearest stop loss that i can give you on the stock would be around seven percent however the target can be pretty big here you can hold the stock for a big enough target of um around 20 to 30 percent now that is the reason why i will not suggest you to make a short term position here but a mid to long term position because the stop loss is slightly longer uh, slightly broad another alternative is that you wait for the stock to come down the reason why i believe that the stock will come down a little bit is that there is this trend line that i have drawn and i can see that the stock has been taking some resistance to this trend line and i feel like uh, you know if if this resistance is true then the stock might come back down to retest the level of approximately 3400 which would be a good point to enter but on the other hand if the stock continues to move up and goes above this gray line which is nothing but the 500 dma of the 75 minute time frame basically if the stock gives a breakout above the level of 3600 then also you can go ahead and make a fresh position all right let's move on and take a look at the other comments so okay before i uh, comment uh, uh, before i help you out with the other comments just a small reminder from the et moderator that if you want to book one-on-one -on -one consultation services you can use the link and book that I will help you out with any uh, portfolio analysis requirements that you may have or help you with setting a better strategy about your stock market approach. So we have Yash with us today and he is asking for views on Avas for swing buying and what could be the possible target. Okay. All right. Avaaz does look very promising and that too after a massive downtrend. So as you can see on the chart, Avaaz is a super duper cyclical stock which means it has a tendency to, to go up a multi bagger So like last time it went up around 2.3x in just uh, a little over one year and then it also fell down massively 60 percent in uh less than one year then again it rallied around 2.7 x in slightly over two years and then it came it has now come back down almost 60 percent from that peak now what is interesting is that on the weekly time frame it looks like it's taking a support on the daily time frame there is a positive divergence on rsi on the 75 minute time frame also there is a positive divergence on the 15 minute time frame there is rsi positive range shift which basically tells us that something is happening and because the stock is still very close to the 
um, still very close to the lower range, the risk reward ratio here would be potentially very, very attractive. So in Avas for fresh position, you can take a position right away with a stop loss of around 2.5%. Uh, so basically don't keep a stop loss lower than 1354 you unnecessarily don't want to risk your capital and as for the target I can see that um, in the downward journey the stock does have a tendency to test this green line which is the 100 EMA on the, of the daily time frame and that would give us a target of around 18%. So right now, because the stock has not really given any breakout per se, it's difficult to give you more optimistic targets. But yes, when the stock does come close to this 100 EMA level, which is basically the level of 1630, then I would be interested in taking a look at the chart again and determining what to do with the active position. So Yash, I hope you found the analysis useful. If you did, please do connect with me on Telegram. I would love to get more stock uh, queries from you. All right, so we have, uh, uh, I think, Reshma. And she's asking how to identify targets for swing trade and the stop loss. Okay, so there are multiple ways that you can uh, determine targets. One way is by using support resistance levels. So basically, if you're trying to enter a stock near a support, try to identify where the resistance might be and keep that as a target. Now, how to determine these support and levels? There are again many ways of doing that. Look for uh, areas of consolidation. Look for candlestick wicks uh, consolidating near the same price level. Draw trend lines, draw Fibonacci retracements. That's one, that's multiple ways how you can determine stop loss and targets. Um, sorry, um, you can determine support and resistance. And then these support and resistance can be used to determine stop loss and target levels. All right. Um, so Dilip Ji, thank you for your kind words. We have Shubham, he's asking about Trident. Okay. All right, so on the chart of Trident, what I can see is that it has taken very textbook support on the 200 EMA of the weekly time frame. And when that happened on the RSI, we also see RSI taking support at the level of 30 and then turning up. Now let's take a look at the weekly time frame. Now the weekly time frame is not telling us a very strong story because what I see is that when the price approached the level of 30, the RSI breached the level of 30, which in my opinion usually means that correction abhi baki hai. And here again, I can see that uh, the level of 60 has been acting as a resistance of sorts. Sure, the price of the stock is trying to go above the 200 EMA on the daily time frame, but so far it has not been very successful. So I am not very positive of making a fresh position here. If I did, however, I would maintain a 5% stop loss. Why would I make a position if at all? Because of the stock's personality. As you can see, the stock is a super cyclical stock, which means it has a tendency to give upswings, which can be multi-bagger upswings and give massive downtrends as well. So it's going up like, uh, 3x, 4x, 5x, and then it's coming back down maybe 70%, 80%. I mean, just look at this stock. There are three instances when this stock has given more than 70% um, corrections, and there are multiple instances when the stock has given absolute multi bagger returns, right? And what I can see now is that the stock has again given around 60% uh, stop, 60% uh, 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 correction and started to go back up. Now, because an uptrend has started, here it makes sense for me to keep a reasonable stop loss and then hope uh, and then maintain a higher target. So basically, what given the personality of Trident, what I will do is I will bet that this uptrend, which is supposedly started here is going to continue so i will look for the last low which i can see 
is this around the level of 32 so 32 becomes my approximate stop loss which is 5% not very bad and then from here I can see the next uh, resistance comes from the trend line which is approximately 30% higher so that is going to become my potential target for this stock now if the stock goes down I lose 5% of my capital I am okay with that if the stock goes up I gain 30% on my capital which is fantastic overall it gives me a risk reward ratio of approximately 6 which is an absolute win why not take this position however in different scenarios I would not be comfortable risking 5% of my capital because honestly that is very big I would rather have made this position when the stock came back down to retest this uh, moving average which is a 200 moving average on the 75 minute time frame so see this is another reason why I was telling you that when you're doing chart analysis don't keep switching the one single uh, chart window rather have multiple chart windows because here I can get visibility of different moving averages on different time frames that really helps in the analysis all right Shubham I hope you found that useful moving on to promote G so he's asking how much minimum money do you suggest is sufficient for training to get good returns so promote G the trick in the stock market is that once you become a good trader it doesn't matter how much money you have because by the power of compounding you can compound one single grain of rice to conquer an entire kingdom right so the right question is how much money do you need to become a good trader there are two ways of becoming a good trader one is by believing that you will become a good trader by buying courses and investing in that so you can either spend your money on that or you can pick up any technical analysis book or any trading book start studying that start applying that and the money that you lose in practical trading take that as lesson costs use trade trackers identify your winning strategies your losing strategies your winning behavior patterns your losing behavior patterns eliminate what is not working implement what is working multiply that and then become a good trader so I believe that in order to have you need sufficient capital to actually uh, trial like test multiple strategies in the market I'm sorry and uh, for that I think you if you want to become a full time trader like I don't feel good saying this but it is the hard truth you need a capital of at least one CR after providing for at least six months of your living expenses including everything from medical emergencies to rent to food to entertainment because uh, trading is not like any other business there is a possibility of ruin and the possibility of ruin is a lot more uh, probable than in any other business here so if you want to become a good trader and earn good returns then make sure that you have at least one CR capital if you want to do it full time if you don't have that kind of money then I would suggest that you don't leave your current job you stay at the job and keep practicing until you start seeing consistent returns okay so we have Saurabh he's asking about UPL so UPL is looking good but not for fresh entry right away because the stock has already gotten away and has been in a bear trend for a while the stock is also taking some resistance at what is the 200 EMA on the 75 minute time frame and overall if you see the RSI on both the 15 minute time frame and the 75 minute time frame is kind of overheated so if you want to make a fresh position I would suggest that you wait for the stock to come slightly down I think stock can come down to around 688 and then from there maintain a stop loss at around uh, 675 and from that you can um, so yeah you can expect some upside here but it's not very significant so honestly what I'll tell you is that there are much better opportunities available in the market than UPL not much uh, it's not looking very attractive so I would suggest you to avoid it 
all right we are coming to the end of this session we've already overshot we have few more queries so one is from dipti sinha she's asking about itc all right so itc again making fresh position unfortunately not suggested because already massive rally has occurred and the stock is extremely overheated so if you have a current position i would suggest that you continue to hold it all right um maintain a target uh, maintain a stop loss of one and half percent which would be approximately near uh 438 for a target of around um 78 percent maybe 480 all right dish tv so one of the other reasons why i recommend you guys to never make a position after a stock has given significant rally is because it introduces a lot of biases in the way we behave now, if you don't know the biases which can affect you as a trader, I will suggest you to go into the archives and look at the session which I did on Monday. I spoke in I spoke in details about behavioral biases. And if you're a new trader, knowing about that subject will really help you get some good perspective. All right, we have Sakshi with us and uh, she's asking about Dish TV. All right, so Dish TV, I do not like this talk. Uh, kind of, it's not liquid enough for my liking. I don't like the way the stock charts are formed. Like, so you can see how, uh, like there are lots of wicks here, which means if I take a position and if I put a stop loss, there is a very good chance that the position is going to just whipped out. Um. But if you want to make a long position, uh, the chart is not looking very decisive. So I would suggest not to go with uh, Dish TV right now. However, if you do want some good trade setup, I would suggest you join my Telegram channel. And there are some trade setups that you can participate in. All you have to do is use the link, which is in the comment section. And then once you're in the channel, use the link, which is pasted there. All right, so we have a very good question from Mahesh Ji. he's saying that there is a long lower wick in z entertainment all right z entertainment limited right okay so there's a long lower wick so in weekly chart okay so he's also mentioned the time frame which is awesome okay so yeah there is the, not one but there are multiple long lower wicks in roughly the same price horizon uh zone so this basically becomes like a really good support zone and if i extend this back let's see if this zone was actually a good support zone or not so we see that the price took strong resistance here right here it gave a strong breakout and ensued into a rally here once it revisited it tried to go back above failed once it did go back above it came back down took support went up took support went up took support went up so yes this is indeed a strong support zone and the occurrences of these uh, multiple wicks here is a good indication now let's move to one time frame lower the daily time frame and take a look at the volumes now we can see here that especially on the days where the either the lower wick was very long or a solid green candle was formed the volume has been pretty solid which is very encouraging so i would suggest i would say that um it's looking very good right now now let's take a look at the rsi and hear what it has to say so the rsi is also advocating for a bullish reversal with a uh, positive divergence now let's take it the 75 uh, take a look at the 75 minute time frame and see what it has to say same story positive divergence on the rsi indicating that a bullish in the uh, bullish reversal is on the way 15 minute time frame is showing some on and off bullish range shift so all in all because the stock is still pretty close to its lowest price i would suggest that you can make a position for a long term why long term because just see this is a very volatile stock and the smallest 
stop loss that again suggest to you in this position in this talk basis all the observations that i've given you is 13% now this is also the reason why it's so risky for someone who is risk averse they there is no reason why they should be willing to risk such a uh, huge chunk of their capital on any position like this i would also not i would also suggest you to limit your allocation to this stock to maximum uh, 3% of your total portfolio if you want to take a position i as a research analyst uh, and a service where i tell people to trade in the market i will not suggest you to trade in zeal because it's a highly unreliable stock when it comes to price uh, momentum the minimum stop loss in a favorable position is also massive and uh, you know there's a lot of corporate governance issues here which i am personally not comfortable with just my opinion however if you do want to take a position um so to give you a target i think this forms a pretty good target basically the 200 ema on the weekly time frame is a good potential target which is around 30% so see this is another reason why this trade setup becomes pretty unattractive despite of the strong positive evidences that we've seen that the risk reward ratio is not sufficient it's barely above 2 so if you have to maintain a stop loss of around more than 13% and you're getting only 30% in returns i believe in my opinion it is not worth risking your capital for because again uh when you enter a trade on the basis of predetermined setup there is nothing there is no power in the world guaranteeing that the target is going to come so you have to start with a strong position and then see how it plays out okay who so that is all i had for today i hope you found this session useful and had fun listening to everything that i had to say i honestly enjoyed sharing my insights and because i am very passionate about technical analysis these live sessions help me learn more through your queries as well now i have already shared the telegram channel link and if you enjoyed the session or want to connect with me in the capacity of a research analyst you can use the link to join my telegram channel and we can connect after that you can also visit my website expinvest.in and book consultation services or the et moderator is also sharing the one on one consultation link you can use that either way so this is all i had for today i will see you again on friday at the same time that is 2:30 pm with the market outlook series in that i bring to you the entire week's price action we discuss the chart of nifty bank nifty intersector charts and some more stuff about the stock market so with that have a good trading day tomorrow i hope your positions do well and namaste